All right. So, yeah, thank you for letting me be here. Uh, I had no idea I was going to follow NG Rap until I think a couple days ago, and wow, <laughs> no pressure, right? So, I'm going to talk to you about uh, something that's not rap, but uh, hopefully it is very pertinent to you, okay? So, uh, first, a little bit about me, okay? The intro just said a little bit I'm technical lead over performance at Domo. What that means is I go and I try and make sure that Domo's fast, whether it's our iOS app, Android app desktop web, mobile web, you know, from the UI layer all the way down into the depths of our back-end systems. I'm trying to help debug it, make sure that everyone's on top of that, okay? So that's what I do. That's during the day, but I also really like sometimes if I get a little bored, I go and I look for something that I can break, right? So I try and go find a security hole. So uh, Dave called me Timmy. I don't usually go by Timmy. It's usually Tim. Uh, and occasionally, Timmy Hat, you put that together, you get Time Hat. So usually that's my username is Time Hat. Everywhere except Twitter. I was a little late on Twitter, so got Tim underscore you hat there. Uh, when I'm not doing programming, I'm hanging out with my wife and my four kids, and uh, I love those guys. So grateful for them. So I'm a proud dad. All right. So what am I going to talk about? In AngularJS 1.6, the sandbox, the Angular Expression sandbox is removed. Okay. So we're going to talk about what that means. Is that a security vulnerability for you? What, what do you need to know? What do you need to do? Okay. So where we're we going? First, we're going to have a little bit of review of what injection is review Angular expressions, just a few details about that, talk about what the sandbox was, what it was doing for you, talk about why it was removed, and then what do you need to do to recognize vulnerabilities within your own app, and how do you fix those vulnerabilities? And then we have a couple items of food for thought at the end, okay? So, injection. What is injection? Injection is when you let your users inadvertently run code on your system, okay? Either on your back end or on your client side code. You don't want your users defining the code that you run, right? That runs on your site. Usually this happens because you have something that's yours, right? And you concatenate in something that's not yours, and that results in bad stuff happening, okay? So executing user content is bad, or even just more generally, the potential of executing user content within your app is bad, right? You don't want your app executing code that you don't have control over. That's, that's not a good design pattern, right? So what does injection look like? Looks like little bobby drop tables, okay? Classic XKCD. Of course, the joke there is SQL injection. If this is your backend code, and you just concatenate in the username here, and you're not uh, using prepared statements or otherwise making that, that text safe, mom comes along, names her son little bobby drop tables, and suddenly this is your SQL statement, right? And of course, dropping table students is bad stuff, okay? You don't want to do that. So in HTML, maybe you learned about it back when you're doing PHP, if you did PHP. Uh, maybe you just echoed the post title and you didn't HTML escape that, right? And so when your users came along, decided that their post title was going to be this thing, and now your template or your page that comes out the other end is this. And you don't want that, okay? So that's the basics. That's kind of the idea of injection, right? You might be thinking, okay, well, my app doesn't really have anything vulnerable or anything uh, or valuable, anything that someone's going to want to steal, or maybe I'm one of those 90% is what I think we heard this morning. 90% of apps that's behind the firewall. It's just an internal tool. No one else is really using my app. It's not public. Do I really have to worry about it? Well, just remember that your app is part of an ecosystem, right? So. In the last couple of weeks, there have been a couple of vulnerabilities reported in the LastPass extension. Okay, I, I use LastPass. Maybe I shouldn't tell you that because you're all going to try and hack me now, right? But a lot of uh, vulnerabilities these days are combinations of multiple weaknesses across an entire system that you combine those together, and then you can you know, deliver your malicious payload or do what you want to do if you're an attacker. So your app doesn't live in isolation. When, you're, when your users come and use your app, even within your organization, they have browser ex extensions installed. So if someone else in your organization wants to hack your users, you don't want to be that weak link, right? Even if it's in combination with something else. So second piece of review, Angular expressions. What are Angular expressions? If you're like me, you learned Angular expressions from Dave Geddes, all right? And he taught you that you could do this. And you'd put that in your template, and two curly braces on either side with one plus one. And in your UI, you'd get two. And you're like, hey, that's really cool. OK. And then the very next thing you learned is that you could access items within the scope. So you have user.name. And maybe on your scope, you have a user object with attribute name. And it's time hack, because you're me. Or you're not me. I don't know. And you get your username on the screen, right? 
maybe in a different context, when your users is to decide to do something that's a little bit more malicious, not what you want them to do, right? They've come in and they've decided that they want to set their name to a script tag. So what happens in that case? In your UI, you're going to get this, right? That is to say, you're going to get this, right? It's going to be HTML entity encoded. Angular's going to do that for you. And you're going to get some ugly text on the screen, but you're not going to execute user code, OK? So that's how the expressions work. You're going to be good. OK, the expression sandbox. What was the expression sandbox, OK? So that's what I'm talking about. That's gone as of AngularJS 1.6. What does that mean for you? If you're maintaining an old application, or you're migrating to Angular, or you're already on Angular, you know, it's the same idea of template injection, OK? So let's go, go through what the sandbox was. The sandbox limited what you could do within an expression, OK? So you couldn't reference the prototype of an object. If you did that, you'd get an error. You couldn't reference items on the global scope, OK? The window object or things you may have hung off of that. If you go read the blog post that the team put out when they announced the removal of the sandbox in 1.6, you'll read, you know, they explain that the entire concept of the sandbox was to help you as an engineer, was to help you write clean code, testable code, code that you can maintain. It wasn't meant to be a security feature. The fact that an expression could potentially do something dangerous well, that's code. Yeah, if you let someone else put code on your website, that's your problem to begin with. It's not that the sandbox maybe had some vulnerabilities or ways for people that were really creative to get out of that sandbox, OK? So in Angular 1.6, no more sandbox. And to use this meme again today, you might think, hey, cool, now I can access all the things. I can touch prototypes and global scope and all this stuff. But of course, one does not simply ignore best practices and expect their app to work really well, right, and be maintained. So. OK, so what happened? Why, why did we get to this point? Why is the sandbox, why was it removed in 1.6? So creative people came along, and they found out that, yeah, there's a sandbox, but I can do these things and get out of that sandbox. And so these were probably reported as security vulnerabilities in Angular, and you know, everyone was looking at this. And the team, you know, as these things were reported, would put patches in and f figure out, OK, yeah, let's make the sandbox a little stronger, fix that one, fix that one. And these strings kept coming through, and they'd get more and more complex for each new version of Angular, right? And patch, and patch, and patch. Eventually, you look at one of these strings for 1.5.9, <laughs> you know, and a couple patch versions after that. It's like, imagine you're on the Angular team, and this comes through as a security vulnerability. You know, someone wants to tell you that it's a security vulnerability in your framework. You have to understand what that's actually doing. I looked at this for a while. I have no clue, right? You have to understand what it's doing. You have to then figure out how to fix that and make the sandbox stronger and do that without breaking the world. The team just said, look, it's not security. It's, you know, this wasn't meant to protect your app from injection. This was meant to help you as engineers. No more patches, no more sandbox. We're going to get rid of it. So if you're, you know, if you're paying attention, maybe you felt like the world was on fire with this announcement, right? The world's not on fire, or if it is on fire, it's for other reasons, right? Not because of the Angular sandbox removal. So maybe at least you felt like, hey, my app's on fire. And I might feel like my app's on fire because, hey, Angular's got all these exploits that people are posting online. But that's not actually the case, OK? The real problem was that you're letting users define things within your template, OK? If you have this problem, we're going to go over this. I'm going to help you recognize it, help you fix it, OK? So that's where your fire would be, is if your users or someone else is able to define an expression on your Angular templates, OK? So what does an Angular template injection look like? I'm going to give you two patterns. Here's the first one. Okay, if you're using, so this is an AngularJS example. Say you have dollar sign compile. And here's your template. You got the string. You're concatenate in item.name. Okay? That probably, most of you probably look at that immediately and say, hey, that's not being escaped. Okay, let's, es let's, es uh, let's escape item.name. Well, what happens to an expression? If your user sets their name to an Angular expression, that's just going to come through. The curly braces aren't special HTML, right? So that expression potentially is just going to flow right through your escape logic. Okay? Let me give you another example. Dynamically building your Angular template server side, right? Best practice says don't do this. Okay? So in this example, I have my body tag. I put ng app on, so I'm going to bootstrap Angular on my body. 
I've got item.name, my server side templating engine is going to replace that with whatever the item.name is. And then later on, maybe in my template, I have an image with an ng source, and I want to have that point to my avatar URL, right? So your attacker comes along and they say, hey, let me set item.name to something malicious, okay? So I've got two different things here that look a little malicious, a script tag and then this expression. And you look at the expression, what's it trying to do? It's trying to set that avatar URL equal to a URL that's not under my control, that's under the attacker's control, and then they're going to put into that URL the session token that they found somewhere on my root scope, okay? I don't want my user session tokens going out on this URL to someone else's website, okay? They're going to log it, they're going to attack my users. I don't want that happening, right? So item.name comes along as that. That gets HTML escaped by your templating engine on your server side. So that's kind of the output of the escape function. Combine that into your template. Here's what your template looks like now, right? So I've got my H1 tag. My script tag, that's escaped. That's fine. That's going to show up as ugly text on the screen, but no big deal, right? But look at that Angular expression. That came right through. I have ng-app on the body there. And so what's going to happen is Angular is going to come along, and it's going to do what you told it to do, because you told it, hey, set avatar URL equal to this thing, and then ng source. Oh, let me replace that, put a source on the image, and I'm going to go, and your browser now is going to say, hey, I'm going to go load that image. Okay? I didn't come up with this, okay? And oh, one more thing real quick. Notice that this expression in the template that I injected into this template, that's not using one of those sandbox exploits, okay? There's no escaping the sandbox on that one, okay? So I didn't come up with this. If you want to learn more and you know, get another review of that, look up Ryan Hansen, okay? I've got his website first. It looks like his website went down in the last couple days, but there's another version of his same article on this, on the second link here. So go Google him. He, he demonstrated this attack against Plunker, okay? So Plunker had a vulnerability. He figured it out. He reported it to them. They fixed it within an hour, I think he said. You know, really cool. Good job for those guys. Um, so again, another look at the exploit string. You look at it, it's an expression. Okay? It's not that the output of the expression is bad, it's that the expression itself is bad. Someone managed, potentially someone could manage to put this expression into your Angular templates. You don't want them to be able to do that. So again, danger, dangerous expressions, not the output of those expressions. So if I have user.name is my expression, and my user comes along and sets their username to one of these nasty exploit strings, well, Angular's going to treat that as user data, and it's going to not look inside of that and try and parse it as an expression. I'm just going to get this nasty thing in my browser that is ugly text, but it's not executing in the browser, okay? Just like we talked about. So user.name was this script tag, got escaped, and we were good, okay? So again, the danger is in the expression itself if someone else has control over your templates, not what comes out the other end of your expressions, okay? So that leads us to guideline number one. I lifted this straight off the AngularJS documentation. Next slide, straight off the Angular documentation, okay? Don't mix server templates with your client templates. And also don't use, don't use user content when you generate templates dynamically, okay? So the other part, if we look at the Angular documentation, it says Angular templates are the same as executable code. Never generate template source code by concatenating user input and templates, okay? So these are the ideas that excusing, executing user content is bad, and concatenating something that's not yours with something that is yours is likely going to lead to bad stuff happening. Okay, so what do I have to do? How do I fix this? If I think through my app and it's like, yeah, I put ng app right on the body tag, and yeah, I have a few values that my server's replacing you know, on my server side template, what do I have to do? How do I fix this, okay? So a couple options here, right? You can stop mixing server and client side templates. So that's our best practice. Stop doing those things. Another option you have is you can use the ng non-bindable directive, okay? So in AngularJS and also in Angular. So I'm going to take one of my previous examples and show you what, what that means. So on this div, the, so here's my template that I'm passing to dollar compile. On the div, I'm going to put ng non-bindable, and I'm going to make sure to escape the user content, right? Because I don't want my user to close that div tag so that now that uh, element that has ng non-bindable on it is closed, and then they can potentially put their expression, right? So make sure you're escaping user content and use that in conjunction with ng non-bindable. Okay. And then also the example on the server-side template, 
or if you're in Angular, not AngularJS, use ng non-bindable. Okay. So summarize guideline number one, don't let your users have control over your templates and then therefore the functions that execute within Angular. Another thing you need to know, user content is dangerous in other places within Angular as well. Okay, so also from that blog post where the team talked about removing the sandbox, they call out all these different functions where if you pass user content as a string, it could be inter interpreted as an expression or as JavaScript code, and you of course don't want that to happen. So find this uh, blog post, it's on their uh, blogspot uh, page, right? And Go look through your code. Look at how you're using these functions. Make sure that you don't have vulnerabilities where, yeah, I'm concatenating in user input, but I've escaped it. Turns out that's not really enough. I also have to use this ng non-bindable. So check for that. So food for thought number one. Your templates might be more than you think. I, I kind of covered this, but it's the idea that I put ng app on my HTML or on my body tag, right? Everything within my document or within my body, if I do this, is my Angular template. Okay, because Angular's gonna come wrong, it's gonna say, okay, here's where I bootstrap, I'm gonna scan everything within that, and I'm gonna find expressions and directives and things like that, and I'm gonna do my job. So bootstrap Angular where you need it, double check where you've bootstrapped it that everything within there is under your control. Okay, if you're doing stuff on the server for server-side templating within that, you gotta be very careful, very cautious within there, okay? Food for thought number two. User content might be a little bit more extensive than you think, okay? So I was thinking about a project I worked on a couple years ago, and I was thinking about the data model for one of our objects that we had. And I thought about it, it's like, yeah, we have this type field, and we, we define what that is, but you know, I bet that's just stored as a string on the server. And I know this endpoint that I can call to update the model, so maybe I can put a dangerous value in for the type and this is old backbone code, and this is what it looked like, right? And so that script tag just came right through, and hey, I got an alert in my browser, and I thought, oh, that's not good, right? So things that you might not consider to be user content, something that you store, that you generate, if you're not enforcing that on the server side, it's not an enum, right? Then you might have a vulnerability there, and you might not expect that to be user content, but it might actually be, okay? So make sure you're thinking that. So that, that's guideline number three. Be suspicious, okay? Don't take anything for granted, especially if you're just working on the front end and someone else is working on your back end. You don't know if they've done what they should be doing in being strictly enforcing certain things. So as you write your front end code, think about that. Think about what are all the different ways that this might not be what I, what I expect it to be. Okay, people that work with me know that on our dev instance of Domo, this is my username. Okay. I had an engineer reach out to me uh, within the last year and say, hey, I was working on a feature and I got an, little, an alert in my browser and it had your name in it. And wait, what? I guess this doesn't have my name in it. Maybe I should put my name in it so they know who to talk to. But, you know, it saved them, right? They were able to find a vulnerability that was in the code they were actively working on and they were able to fix that before it ever went out to users. So, guideline number four, hack your app. It's fun, right? I found a lot of uh, vulnerabilities on things I've worked on. Don't do it in production. <laughs> Your employer's not gonna like that. Y a lot of problems with that, okay? So hack your app, have fun, okay? I think it's fun when I find these things, it's kinda like, hey, I found something. I gotta go, you know, be responsible, talk to the parties involved, but have fun. I think it's fun. So remember, Angular's not on fire, Sandbox is gone, but the sandbox wasn't there to be security in the first place. Angular's not on fire. Just keep the injection vulnerabilities out of your app. Use ng non-bindable. Don't mix server and client templates. And don't let your users set you on fire. Thank you.